Building a reliable connector starts with one thing, using the right tools. Hi, I'm Kirk with DMC, and today I will be walking you through the complete process of building a connector. From selecting the right contact, wire, and tooling, all the way to crimping, assembling, and testing. Whether you're new to connector assembly or just looking for a refresher, this demonstration will show you how to navigate DMC's tool selection resources and apply best practices step by step. To begin the process of building a connector, first you will need to select the proper contact, wire, and tooling. You can do this using DMC's tool selection search or catalog. For this demonstration, we will be using the Mill Detail 26482 Series 1 connector and our tool selection search. Select connectors and use the drop down to select the correct option. Click search and find the contact part number indicated in the spec. In this case, the contact part number is M39029 slant 32-247. Once you select the contact, you will be directed to a page that includes the applicable crimp tools, accessories, and insertion and removal tools. In some cases, multiple tooling options are available. For this demonstration, we will use the AF8 with the TH1A turret head along with the DAK16B insertion tool and the DRK16B removal tool. To select the correct contact retention tester, identify the contact retention requirements specified in your internal guidelines. Then refer to page 51 of the DMC catalog to identify the appropriate HT210 or HT250 contact retention tester and tips. For this example, we need to verify seven pounds of contact retention force on size 16 contacts, so we will use the HT210-16. To select the proper wire stripper, view the AS5768 slant 1 or slant 2 wire to tooling cross-reference tables available on our website. For this example, we know our wire falls into the AS5768 slant 1 slash sheet, so we will refer to this table to find our wire range and wire spec, which will indicate the applicable wire stripper. For our size 16 wire with a M22759 slant 34-16 part number, we will be using the Ergo Elite 55-1987 wire stripper. Let's begin preparing the wire for termination. First, find the correct blade slot that matches your wire gauge. Next, ensure that the wire is centered in the slot to prevent nicking the conductor and push the wire until it reaches your desired strip length. Strip the wire by squeezing the handles firmly in one smooth motion. Remove the stripped wire by releasing the handles to open the jaws. Ensure the conductor is undamaged and ready for termination. Next, we will gauge our crimp tool to ensure it is crimping properly. We recommend periodic gauging of all crimp tools. The applicable gauge is typically indicated on the tool, but it can also be found using our tool selection search on our website. For this tool, we will be using the G125. First, we will set the proper selector setting, for this instance, four. Next, we will insert the go side of the gauge. The go pin should pass freely. Then we'll insert the red side of the gauge, the no-go side. The pin may enter slightly, but not pass through fully. If the go pin does not go or the no-go pin goes, then the tool or the accessory should be calibrated. Now that the tool has passed the go no-go test, we will install the compatible accessory. In this example, we will install the TH1A turret head onto our AFA crimp tool. It is essential to keep the handle open throughout the process. Start by aligning the guide pin with the small hole in the retaining ring. Next, screw in the turret with the 964 hex wrench. Using the data plate, identify part number M39029 slant 32-247 and rotate the turret until the color-coded insert is in line with the index mark. Next, locate the contact crimp barrel size and the wire size to find the correct selector setting. We are using the size 16 contact and size 16 wire, so the correct selector setting is six. 
Once the tool's selector setting has been adjusted to 6, depress the turret by pushing it until you hear a click. Now you are ready to crimp. With the handle still open, drop the contact into the contact opening on the front side of the tool. Insert the stripped wire making sure all strands are inside the contact and squeeze the handles to the fully closed position. The ratchet will automatically release once complete. Remove your crimped component and inspect that the crimp was successful. Now let's begin building the connector using the DAK16B insertion tool we identified earlier. Begin by using the insertion tool to insert the wire assembly into the tool. Position the crimp barrel or shoulder of the contact at the tip of the tool. Hold on to the tool handle and wire and align them straight with the connector before pushing the tool into the cavity of the connector. When the contact is fully seated, a snapping action will most likely be felt and heard. With a smooth motion and in a straight line, remove the insertion tool. If you need to remove a terminated wire, first identify if you are working with a front or rear release connector. Rear release connectors can be identified by a blue band on the outer shell. Rear release connectors often use a tweezer type removal tool, while the front release connector generally uses a spring-loaded probe type removal tool. For front release connectors, start by removing or loosening your back shell or compression ring if applicable. Then gently insert the probe style removal tool in or around the pin or socket contact in front of the connector. Push the tool firmly until it bottoms in the connector. A snap or click should be heard or felt. Then use the tool's slide to push the contact out of the back of the connector. Once the contact releases from the connector, pull the removal tool out in a straight line and remove the wire assembly from the opposite side. If you are working on a rear release connector, squeeze the tweezer style removal tool to open the tool's probe and place it around the wire. Then slide the tool towards the connector and push through the grommet in a straight line until you feel or hear a click. Hold the wire and tool while pulling it out in a straight line to release the contact from the connector. Finally, you'll want to use the contact retention tester identified earlier to verify each contact is properly seated in the connector. If you are testing a pin contact, insert the tester over the mating end of the contact. The tool must be in a straight line with the contact. Now apply pressure toward the contact until the edge of the tool body aligns with the indicator line on the tip. The contact should remain in place. And that covers the essentials of connector assembly. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. You can also follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and X, or contact us for assistance in finding the right tools for your job.